All right, here's our continuation of section 1.2 uh, from chapter 1. It to be this is the day 2 of that lesson. Uh, we're going to take a look at histograms. So again, we're looking at quantitative variables, quantitative data, um, and we're going to look at a graph of the distribution of uh, the quantitative data, uh, and specifically histograms. So uh, that graph uh, of the distribution may be clear if nearby values are grouped together. So we're going to kind of be looking at grouping together data. And the most common graph of that distribution um, is a histogram. So how do we make a histogram? Well, here's some general guidelines. What we're going to do is we're going to take the range of the data. So go from the minimum to the maximum. Uh, so the range, the minimum to the maximum. And uh, take a look at that data and divide uh, into uh, classes of equal width. Uh, so again, trying to keep the classes to maybe five, to, at the most ten different classes. But again, make sure those different groupings are equal uh, that, and that cover the whole uh, range of the data. So we'll find the count, uh, which is also called frequency, or the percent, which is relative frequency uh, of individuals in each class. So we're going to look at how many do we have in each of those different uh, bins, how many do we have in each of those different classes. Uh, and then label and scale your axes. Uh, so again, uh, with this, our axes, uh, make sure you label both the vertical or the horizontal axis, uh, those are the counts uh, or the, uh, the classes. Uh, the vertical axis will uh, be our counts or our, our percents. Uh, so Again, make sure the height of the bar equals whatever frequency we have or our count we have. And then the bars should touch unless there's no values in that category. So again, histogram bars touch. Back when we talk about categorical data and doing bar graphs, uh, bar graphs, the bars do not touch. So let's take a look at how we might do this. <clears throat> so this data here is on the percent of residents from each state who are born outside of the U.S. All right. So um, we've got we, somebody's already divided these uh, these classes up. Uh, so we have uh, class from zero to five, five to ten. So this is kind of saying zero to less than five. So if it is five, it's going to be in this category. So five to less than ten, uh, ten to less than fifteen. Uh, so we can see these categories all have the same width. And somebody's already done the counts uh, for each of these. Uh, so uh, we want to make the histogram for that. So again, make sure we label our histogram. Uh, this one here happens to be because we're talking about percents. We're going to talk about percents of foreign-born residents. And this is the number of states. We're just doing counts uh, rather than percentages, as we can see here. Right? And it's a matter of just stacking those bars up. You see that there's 20 uh, in this first class from 0 to 5. And there's 13 in, this, in the second class from 5 to less than 10. Uh, so again, just making sure that we uh, make the bars uh, the same width, make sure the height accurately represents that, um, and again, the bars do touch. Now, if one of these categories was 0, we just have a blank that we don't squish it together. Uh, so uh, if there happens to be a 0, there'd just be a blank there. So, several cautions. And to be, be able to use histograms wisely, uh, or looking at some common mistakes students make. Okay. So one of those is, again, as I alluded to earlier, don't confuse histograms and bar graphs. Histograms, the bars touch, uh, and bar graphs, they don't touch. Um, in fact, bar graphs have categorical uh, data uh, down here on uh, the x-axis, the horizontal axis. These are categories down here, not counts. Uh, or not uh, classes uh, with numbers. So like I said here, don't use counts or percents as data. Okay, that's another uh, caution that we might want to uh, be able to do or be, keep in mind. Okay. Use percents instead of counts on the vertical axis. Uh, uh, when comparing distributions with different numbers of observations. Okay, so you can only use percents because counts can kind of distort the data a little bit too. So when you're comparing when you're comparing distributions, 
better to compare the, the percents because there might be a, a different grand total of data that we're using. <coughs> and again, just because a graph looks, like, looks nice, it's not necessarily a meaningful display of data. Uh, that's again the way that people uh, will try to uh, confuse you, and persuade you, is make something look really fancy. Yeah, it looks really good. It must be true. Um, but that's not always the case. All right. So uh, here are the things we should be able to do after the first these two lessons in section 1-2. We looked at dot plots and stem plots. Uh, we should be able to disguise that overall pattern of uh, the data. So remember our socks. Uh, shape is certainly part of one of those as we talk about that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we should be able to make and interpret histograms of quantitative data. So we should be able to, like we just talked about today, uh, be able to histograms and then be able to compare uh, those distributions. All right. So at this point, uh, should be able to do the following problems uh, from the second half of section 1 2. Should be able to do 53, 55, 59, 60, 65, and 69 through 74. Good luck.